Oh, this light's bright. I'm working on something that is incredibly rare, and this is a piece of that thing. It represents some of those parts that you may not be able to get a hold of very easily. So what do you do in those cases? I'm using what's called Fusion 360, which is my favorite CAD modeling software. Fusion 360 is sort of like having graph paper sitting in front of you in a digital environment. But I'm going to keep it as simple as possible, and the only physical tool that I suggest having is something like digital calipers. These come in big handy when you need, um, measure things. <clears throat> um. What I need to worry about is redrawing this thing in a digital environment. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this thing up and I'm going to stare at it. Done. Okay, it's nothing more than a circle. You know, I said, we're just sketching and drawing here in this environment instead of on paper. We need to sketch. We need to get this information over there. Sketch. There we go. After we hit that, I see a yellow and or blue square that shows up. And all this is asking me to do, so say I'm in this orientation here, is it's saying, what piece of paper do I want to sketch this on? Do I want to sketch it on this piece of paper here or plain or this one here? Or this one here. And it doesn't friggin' matter which one you pick. I'm gonna click this one down here just because it's the one that was speaking to me. Now that I click that thing, up here has changed. All of this stuff is going to be relevant to creating a new sketch. I need to create a circle. So I'm just going to click just one of these because it doesn't matter and I'll show you why. When you sketch anything in the environment, I always suggest starting at the origin. Designated by that little whatever that is. A circle and biohazard kind of stick. I don't know what that is. Anyway, that. If that's the origin. And all I gotta do is click. It's asking me to place my first point. And yes, you see M&Ms on the screen. I am an American. The metric system's better. And I'm just going to click again because I've created a circle. Now that may be the wrong size circle, and that's important, but right now it doesn't matter. Cool, I've got the basic shape as I look at it from this angle already there. If you can see, there's a little bit of a lip that's inset from the big major circle that we just sketched already. We're going to create the rest of the stuff that we see here. To create this lip, that means I need to create another circle just inside of the big one that I've already done. Let's do that. We already have the circle selected over here, or C if you want to get froggy, and we're going to click it and we're going to drag it out. Doesn't matter the size just yet. Size matters not. We got the outside, we got the inside lip section, then we got this fancy little funky shape thing in the middle. We'll figure that out. So when we look at it this way, it's like a letter I that if it had a belt on, it was squeezed way too tight like a cartoon. Whatever. I don't know. That. I'm going to create a line right down the middle of this origin. And if you notice up here in the create, line has an L. So using that or the drop down menu, doesn't matter. And I just clicked and clicked again and made some random arbitrary line right down the center. I'm going to make this what's called a construction line rather than a line that really adds to the design in any way. Let's just click that line to select it. Nothing fancy there. And over here where it says line type, all I'm worried about is creating construction line. And you can see that it turned a different color. It became dotted. And it's only there so I can then reference that line in the future. Now let's set some dimensions or give things that we've already done an actual definitive size. That's all that means. Take my calipers here. Looks to be about 19.8. I'm going to round it up to 20 just because. And I'm going to go to create and down to dimension. That's the one where we just measured. That's the one we need to set the size for. And if I click on it and I just then drag out to the side, I see a dimension that pops up. And once I click one more time, it brings up a box that I can then type in some number, in this case, 20 millimeters. Say we got that number wrong, we could just double click on it and then reset it, but in this case, we're fine. So now let's dimension that other circle that we created, which is the one that's inset a little bit that represents the lip that's right here on the outside. Now we can go through and we can try and measure that thing, or we can simply just measure the thickness of that lip itself, which appears to be about 1.5. Then hit D for dimension, like this box says, or just click it. Click on that circle. Click out here, just so I can see the box that I'm typing in. And just type in 20 minus 1.5. And it'll do the math for us. So we have those circles 
the exact size they need. And why I dimensioned those is because now I'm going to measure this center little detail piece that we see on this knob. And it appears to be five at the widest, 3.5 at the thinnest in the center where it gets squeezed together. I'm going to draw a line going from the top here straight down, from the top here straight down, and then I'm going to draw two more lines. I know that the overall width needs to be five millimeters. The inside needs to be three. We can do this with the dimensioning tool that we've already used. I'm going to select it, click the line on the outside, one of them, click the very center origin dot, and then just drag it to where somewhere where I can see it. Click again, and we get that same box. And I know it needs to be five overall, but we're only doing half of it because we started at the origin all the way to the edge of it. That's only half of the thing because we got the other half over here. So it's five divided by two. It automatically inputs 2.5. It goes down to 3.5. So we're going to hit D for dimension. It's already selected, but just to be sure. Center point to this line, 3.5 divided by two. Now we can just do that exact same thing over here. And what this represents now is the basic shape of the outside of this thing. So if we pictured that this was a rectangle that was not squeezed in, it would look like what we see on the screen, the outside. And if we pictured that the center where it is squeezed in was a rectangle, that's what we see as that inset rectangle too. Both of these aren't the final shape, so they're just for my reference for what I'm going to do next. So that means I can turn these into construction lines, just like I did on the center one here. I'm going to select the line, hit construction, and that turns that one into a construction line. I have to have it selected first. But if I have multiple selections, what I can do is click one, hold down the shift key, select the other ones, and then go over here and hit construction, and it just does it all at one time for me. So if we look at this and think about it logically, what we're looking at is not really a squeezed rectangle. That's one way of thinking about it, but it's also, there are two arcs going like this away. There's a tool for that. Create arc. I'm gonna click the top one. And then you see that our palette over here changes once again. And if you see over here where it says feature options, we're gonna use this one, it's default usually. We're gonna select the endpoint. Well, it's the outside rectangle that we drew. That's why I drew it for reference. We're gonna select that one. We're gonna go down here, select that bottom one. And right in the center, we have a construction line there. We can just place our mouse and it snaps right to it onto that. And we have a shape. Notice that our line is also dotted. Don't worry just yet. Let's do it to the other side since we're here already. Top, the bottom point, and the center point. Once we've done that, we're finished creating that arc. So instead of hitting finish sketch, I'm just gonna hit escape to still remain able to sketch. See how these arcs are now dotted? It thinks that we're still trying to do construction lines because that was the last thing we really did. I'm gonna click on it. And then instead of making it a construction line, I'm going to unclick it by just selecting it again. Same thing for the other one. Just to know that, no, this is actually a part of the design that I want to be there. The last thing that I see from this perspective is that little center detail. All it is, if you were to think about it logically, is just a rectangle carved right down to the middle. We have a tool for that. Create a rectangle. We'll just select the top one for now. If we started in the origin, we could just use that center rectangle. When we drag out, it's just going to expand that rectangle from that center point. And I'll show you just on the screen because it'll make more sense. So anyway, select it, select the origin, because that's our center of everything in our case. And you can see now that, oh yeah, that makes sense. It's just blowing it up from the center to be some size. Well, we measured that size. It was 0.75 wide. I simply hit tab to cycle between the two different dimensions and to commit to them, enter. Again, it thinks we're doing construction. I'm going to go ahead and select 
all of my lines that I just created. In this case, it's kind of a pain in the butt because there are multiple lines. And the X in the middle just means that these are square. That's all that means. If we were to then click Finish Sketch, because we are done, what we see, a representation of this thing as we look down on it from this angle. Whew! All right. So we've done the thing. Well, sort of. We've done a, a thing. So we have a sketch. We have our very first sketch completed. And we see it over here. You see sketch number two. And if we were to highlight it by clicking on it, we see that, hey, there it is. Now turn our sketch into a thing. It's not a thing just yet. It's just a, an idea of a thing. Most of the things that you do in Fusion 360 when it's creating three-dimensional objects, it is revolved around the idea of extruding, taking two-dimensional sketches and making them three-dimensional. That's all extruding is. Now, an extrusion can mean that it creates a three-dimensional thing, or an extrusion can, in fact, cut away sections, too. So keep that in mind. What we need to do is now extrude this thing so we have a three-dimensional representation of that. If we were to take that and to make it into a 3D object, how far do we have to go with it? Well, if we turn it on our side and then measure the thickness of just this right here, that we need to make this thing seven... Looks to be about 7.15. We need to take our sketches and then extrude them, you know, create them three-dimensionally now. And now we do that by going over here to the create thing again and going to extrude, or the shortcut E. And then we need to select some things that we need to, to extrude. In our case, we need to extrude all of it, and you'll see why. So I'm going to click out here in no man's land and hold and drag over all the things to select them all at one time, just to make it simple. And then I'm going to navigate the cube around so I can see what the heck I'm doing and I'm going to input that dimension that we measured. So I'm going to double click in this box here that you see. It's the same dimension box that we've seen before. 17.15. That's not right. It was 7.15. And there we go. Now we have a three-dimensional object. When we do an extrusion of a sketch, it thinks that we're done with that sketch, so it hides it. And we need that because we have some other things going on in that sketch. So I'm going to come over here to the sketch tab of the, the browser tree over here and click the eyeball to show it all again so I can well, do the rest of the things. I think the next logical thing would be maybe do the lip. Going back to the calipers because they can give us some really fine measurements. Oh, 1.6, 1.5, one, somewhere around there. Deep. Because these are hard to select, because they're sort of buried underneath our new three-dimensional object, or a body, it is now what's called a body. But we need to get this information on top of this thing, because if we were to extrude right now, I'm just going to show you real quick, you don't have to do what I'm doing. We're going to select these profile planes. The only way we can extrude is down, which just adds to it. And if we were to go up, it will cut through it, and you can see now we have holes. That's not going to work out. I want to create a brand new sketch. Follow me. Create a sketch, but instead of selecting a plane like we did at the beginning, I'm going to select a face, which also acts as a plane in the sketch environment because it's flat, like a piece of paper. I'm going to select the very top, and what I'm going to do is project or redraw the things that I need right now, but just in a different location. So I'm going to create a projection right here, project and include. P is the shortcut. I'm going to project what we need for this thing that we're going to do now. How this center circle kind of drops down, and it, it, we're creating that concave section of this. And if you were to look at the side, it is, it is concave, kind of scooped. We need this circle, so we're projecting that circle. Click OK. We're finished, because we don't need anything else. And now we have this one that's purple, which means that it is a projected sketch. And now we're just going to do another extrude, and we're going to extrude the profile that we just projected. Extend this thing down, and it appears to be 1.6 millimeters scooped. Not going to worry about the scoop just yet, but I am going to worry about the deepest part of that scoop. And I told you, extrudes can be either adding to, and I can make it look like this if I want to. It kind of just looks like a top hat in a way. 
But if I go through an object, well, it thinks that I want to cut. And if it's not doing the thing that I want it to do, I can always change it by the operation over here. You got it right, because that is what we need to do. And I need to go down, down, not up, so negative 1.5. And that represents the depth of how far this is scooped down. But it's not just, you know, like a step, like a step from this height to this height. It's concave, right? Not vex, vex is up, yeah. Dished out, kind of like a bowl almost. And to create that bowl look, we're going to use what's called a fillet. No, it's not fillet, I'm not pronouncing it wrong. And that is under the modify, because what we're doing is now we're gonna modify the look of what we've created so far. So I'm gonna go to modify, I'm gonna go to fillet or F, and then I'm going to fill it something. In this case, I'm going to fill it that inside corner so I can create that dish. And it'll make sense when I, when I do it. So I'm gonna create the fill it by either selecting this circle right here that represents the very corner, the inside corner of that thing, or if I just select the circle, it's, it essentially does the same thing. So you can see it now. And I'm gonna make it look pretty close to what it looks like here. Now this is kind of a guessing game. Yes, there are ways that you can do this to make it look exact. That's good enough for what we're doing. And you can see after we do that, I just dragged that slider out to some arbitrary number, but we're missing this little center detail that we created. We're going to bring back our sketch number two, because that's where it is, is we're going to extrude that fancy little center piece all the way to a height that it needs to be. In this case, it kind of goes arched upward. And we'll deal with that in a second, but let's keep it simple. From the very bottom of our concave, it is extruded up two millimeters. We've done this before. We're gonna click on that profile by clicking and holding because it's hard to see through the objects that are in the way. Click on the profile. But we didn't grab that little center detail. So let's grab that too by holding shift, clicking and holding again, because it's hard to get that thing through all the stuff that's in the way. Clicking on that profile, let go of shift, and we have the thing selected. Navigate around easily by the keyboard. I'm holding shift and the center mouse button that allows me to just freely orbit. And I'm going to extrude. I'm going to create, extrude, and I'm going to extrude this thing up. I need to reference this center low spot, because from there, it's, two millimeters past that thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start it in the direction where I need to go, and I'm gonna click where I need it to go to. There, it did the math for me. It's saying at that point where I clicked, it is this distance, but then I need to add an additional two millimeters to that because that is the height that it needs to be. But you see it's red, so that's not right because it thinks I wanna cut. So instead, I'm going to join that and look what happens now. Let's bring the sketch back because it hit it, because that's what it does. Let's create a new sketch. This is something we've done already. We want it to be on top of this thing now. All right, not down here. We're using this as the piece of paper that we're sketching on. We're gonna click it, and then we're gonna project in that center detail line. We already did it, so let's not bother ourselves with recreating the wheel, so to speak, and project that thing. P for projection or just clicking doing this, we're going to project in the pieces of that thing that we need. And once we've done it, click OK. We are finished with that sketch. And we can hide that one if we want to, to get it out of the way. And we're left with this one. So extrude this thingy some distance. Let's just go down because we're going to cut down from this point. Negative, I don't know, one millimeter. And there we go. We have now the detail of that thing from that angle. So if I were to click on this and we were to look straight down at it, it looks pretty close to what we see when we stare down at this thing from the top. But if we were to turn it on its side, no, it doesn't quite look just like what we need it to look like. This center piece right here is actually sort of arched and we need to do that. So let's try a fillet and see if it does what we need it to do. We're gonna fill it which we've already done for this concave piece, this thing here to give it a rounded section. 
without entering any number. And I'm going to select the other one, because might as well kill two birds with one stone, you know, get them both out of the way at the same time. And I'm just going to drag this arrow. And you see that we start to get a shape more like what we need. And the further we go with this thing, the more that shape represents more closely what we need it to represent. We got some more details to work out, but overall, that doesn't look terrible. The only other thing we see in this design from, well, this angle right here, is the lower section. And it just looks like a, I don't know, a cone shape almost. It's not a perfect cylinder added to it. It's more of a cone. So we can go back and we can do these shapes as if we flipped it over and we were to stare at it from this side, we have a circle that we're staring at that is 14.4 and 12.75. So what we actually need to happen now is for this shape to gradually whittle its way down to be this smaller circle size. We're going to do something a little bit more advanced. We're going to finish that sketch and we're going to create a brand new construction plane. This is just like the planes that we're already using, you know, the flat faces or the original starting plane. But instead, we're going to do one that can be set at any point, at any angle, all kinds of goofy things if we want them to be. In this case, I want it to be the overall distance of this cone shape. And this will make sense in a second. 8.75. I want to offset a brand new piece of paper that I can draw on from the bottom of my body that I have here. 8.75 millimeters. So what it's doing is creating a brand new sheet of paper that I can draw on that just kind of floats out in midair because otherwise I can't really draw out here. What this allows me to do is to then project, which we've already done, you know, recreate a sketch that we've done onto this brand new piece of paper that's floating out here. And why that's important is because we can use what's called a loft, which is a fancy way of just saying that I want a shape to kind of eventually work its way down into another shape. We want this circle to work its way down into this circle. Before we get to the loft, I need to project this circle that I created onto this plane. Just click on this thing, create a sketch on that thing, and I already have it sketched, I just need to project it. So project this one, click OK, and then finish it because I'm done. And you can see that now that that plane that we created is hidden, you can see why creating that sketch plane is important because otherwise we wouldn't have been able to get this sketch out here easily without a sketch plane like that. It's just a simple er way of doing it. We are going to create a loft, which is just a fancy extrude that goes from this big diameter or big er diameter down to this small er diameter. So we're going to create a loft of this thing, which includes that because it's solid. And then it goes all the way down to this thing. And when we do that, look at what happens. It's freaking magic. Look at that. That looks pretty good. We're getting there. We're getting there. Because we're not finished on the bottom. We've got a little hole right here, which is actually a keyed section. Create a brand new sketch. We're going to do it right here on the bottom of this thing, because that's where this hole is, or we can start it. We're going to do a circle, and it's a five millimeter hole. And we're just going to draw a line that's in this hole that represents that D shape. So it's like a keyed section where you, it's indexed. You can do this a couple different ways. Let's just draw a line. We're going to draw one here all the way out to here. And I'm going to hit escape. So I'm done drawing that line. I'm going to turn that into a construction line so I can reference it. And you'll see why in a second. And then from this line point right here, I'm going to draw one that goes straight down and touches it. And I'm going to use this straight line now as a reference that represents the edge of my circle. And so from here to here, which represents the edge of my circle, is 4.2. And you see what happened? Oh my gosh, it scooted the wrong thing. I'm going to undo this. Make sure that this thing stays put. And that's where these constraints come into play. 
I'm going to coincident. Just follow me here. What that means is I'm going to make this thing stick to this point here. It's all coincidence mean, and you can use these however you want to. And this dimension is not 3.707. It's actually supposed to be 4.2. So I'm going to double click it and change it. And because I had that constraint there, the only thing that's allowed to move in this case is going to be the line that I want it to move. Whew, we finished it. It was pretty difficult. And there are other ways you can go about doing this, but I wanted to show you some of these other things up here. And now we're back to the exact same stuff that we've already done. We're going to extrude this shape here because that represents that D keyed section. We're going to go down negative 12 millimeters. And there we have the overall shape and design of our thing. I'm just going to speed through this last little bit here because there is a lot of things happening and you can go crazy adding all kinds of detail once you get used to it. But I wanted to show the very basics of how to recreate something that you may need for something like a car restoration or even customization or just around the house. And then I'll show you what it looks like in real life, the thing that we made. All right, it's done. Here it is, 3D printed. Here it is beside the original. It's pretty good. 3D printing is one of those technologies that can definitely benefit anybody who is doing car restoration or customization especially. It's definitely, definitely worth having. And if you wanna see where this thing actually goes, subscribe to the channel because I'll be posting a video of the project that this is actually for. You won't wanna miss it because uh, we'll call it a, a, a bad idea. <laughs> anyway, so if you liked the video, I know it was long, please like the video. Comment if you have something to say, of course. I'll see you in the next one. And then I'm gonna skip ahead and just, you know, touch on the high points. If not, this would be a really long video and it's gonna be friggin' boring and you guys are gonna tune out and I'm never gonna get big on YouTube.